Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our Father. <clears throat> glory to the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are celebrating uh, the name of our glorious Master Jesus Christ. We are giving thanks and praise to each other. Uh, we thank God for this wonderful, wonderful, uh, glorious day. Uh, we remain one continuous day of our glory. For uh, it is still the day that the Lord God Almighty had made. Uh, for we all to rejoice and be glad. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, brothers. Welcome, sisters. Welcome, men and women of God. We thank God for being here with you. As you are here with us, we are together in the presence of God Almighty. Uh, is It is our Wednesday youth service. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this uh, one continuous day of fellowshipping with the King of Glory. Thank you for availing yourself. Uh, thank you for making yourself available uh, for the King of Glory to be used according to his will, according to his measure. Uh, thank you for always praying for us. Thank you for always thinking of us, thinking about us in your heart. Thank you for carrying us in your heart. Thank you for being a partaker uh, with us on this journey, uh, the journey of uh, uh, learning, uh, seeing, and most importantly, manifesting uh, the King of Glory. Uh, some will say it's not possible for one to manifest God, but, but, but it is possible. For God himself manifested in, in flesh, so, uh, and, and Jesus Christ says in the book of John 14, verse 12, that's a great work he did uh, through the grace of God. You remember, he says, I am not of my own will, but I am the will, I'm about the will of my Father. So he said, greater work he do, great work he did, even greater you will do. And for us, for, for you and I, uh, for believers, for Christians to be able to accomplish uh, such great faith, uh, one must be able to manifest Manifest what manifest manifestation of the divine. God is divine. God is divine. And God wants to live in us. How beautiful it is that God wants to live in us. I remember Apostle Kenneth C.J. Chris of Ravenites International Ministries, a ministry that has been planted upon us through the grace of God upon the life of our father, Prof. Sekodana of, Ra <laughs> of Rabboni Center Ministries. We thank you all. Uh, be greeted in the name of the Father, be greeted in the name of the of the Holy Spirit, be greeted in the name of the Son. Wherever you are, be greeted with the Spirit of the Father. Uh, be greeted with the love of the Father. We say Messiah greetings to you on TikTok. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for uh, for uh, being here, for sharing, for commenting uh, on Facebook. We, we remain blessed with your presence. Uh, thank you so much for being uh, uh, one, who, one with us and also uh, causing the gospel to be evangelized. You know, it is beautiful when, uh, when the gospel of Christ, of our Master Jesus Christ, is being evangelized. It is not our gospel, it is our Father's gospel. It is the gospel of our glorious Master Jesus Christ. So together it becomes ours. So we are sharing from the divine because we are partakers of the divine. So we are sharers of the divine. So we are sharing as we are as little as we have received. And you know, the important thing here is that when you share that little that you have received, when you share it, the Lord God Almighty will blesses you all the more. So thank you everyone on YouTube. Thank you everyone on every of our social media platform, Rabbanites International Ministries. Thank you so much. Uh, you are blessed. May the King of Glory blesses you all the more. Uh, we love you all. God loves you. Remain blessed. And right now we are going to be uh, uh, interceding. Intercession uh, uh, happens on every of our blessed service. Every time we convey to uh, share the message, uh, uh, understand and, and learn the message, we start with prayer, uh, and it's a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, we know in our heart, we know in our heart that even before we say, Father, let it, let your will be done on earth. Let the peace of God reign on this earth. Let the peace of God reign in our nation. Let the peace of God reign in families. Let the peace of God reign in lives. Let the peace of God reign in those that are facing distress. We know before we make that prayer, we are sure, we know for a, for a truth, not part. We know for a truth that God has done it. God has done it. That's, eh, eh. Listen, we are not going to be asking God to do or to come down. God already came down. Remember, he lives in us. God already came down. He lives in us. So God is already here with us. So we are giving him thanks for what he has done. You may not know this, but the advice you give to someone today may have even saved the life of the person. You may not even know this, but the prayer you offer to someone today has actually saved the person's life. You may not know this, 
But the way you stand for someone today has made that person not to be re not to be fired from the place of work. So you your, through through you you've been they, they've been able to put they've been able they, there has been uh, a bread on the table of the family because of you because you refuse to be uh, 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 you refuse to find yourself uh, uh, at the place or a uh, point of compromising because you refuse to yield to uh, negativity because you refuse to use your position uh, to bring intimidation that will cause fear into someone's life because you refuse to be part of people who are de dehumanizing people, who are demonizing people, who are causing people to a uh, state of restlessness. You refuse to be part of that, uh, part of those people. So you listen, you, 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 you've blessed lives because of such art such an innocent heart that you've done and unknowingly you do not know that you are actually doing good in the life of a person you will just think that you are just doing what you think is normal no 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 you are doing the work of god and god and god almighty will bless you all the more because now you allow his will you allow his will to be done through you meaning you become a vessel unto honor that is why any moment and every time you have an opportunity or you find your, you find yourself at a place of fellowship at a gathering as we are as we are being gathered here online and and, and you you are there uh, to uh, partake in the ministry in the fellowship understand that it is of importance that the such gathering that has God's presence must start with a prayer of thanksgiving thanking God for having his presence in our life thanking God for having his love overshadowing our life, thanking God for his mercy upon our life, upon the life of all our sundry from all the corners of the world, and that remains every uh, new. You see, it says, it says uh, 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 the book of Psalms, it says, the steadfastness of the Lord never ceases. It never ceases. It says, his grace, his mercy, endures forevermore. And when you hear Paul, Paul that wrote a lot of books, uh, Ephesians, Galatians, Thessalonians, Philippians. He he he, he starts by giving thanks to God and and praying for all all the uh, 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 all the uh, brothers uh, in Thessalonia, all the brothers in Corinth, all the brothers in, in the Philippians. When you when you, when you approach them, he will say to them, "Grace and peace is there already, but he says may be multiplied, may be multiplied upon you." It may be multiplied upon you. Meaning, he's giving thanks to God for 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 the for the uh, for them to avail themselves to be used, and for them not to get weary, for them not to get tired. So we are saying, when we are interceding, it is an uh, it is a, a time and a moment to say, Father, we thank you. We never get tired of availing ourselves, praying for the world, praying for the nation. Never get tired. Never get never get to a position. Never get to a stage in your life when you begin to. I get, uh, calculate uh, how much, uh, how much, or how uh, uh, number of times, or number of efforts, or number of moments you've spent on people, and 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 it it pains you when you find out that the people you are spending this time, this moment with, the value, the input they are bringing to your to your table, to your life, that is not worth it, and you consider it waste. No, listen, listen. Do you know that Jesus spent three and a half years with the disciples? And still they went back to do what they loved doing, not what they spent time with him doing. And still he never gave up on, on, on them. He still appeared to them. He still appeared to them. So when the Holy Spirit from him now came to them, the Holy Spirit now reminded them of their purpose. The Holy Spirit now reminded them of their purpose. John 14. John 16 said, the Holy Spirit will remind you, he will remind you of the purpose of the teaching, the spirit of excellency that they receive from being with the Father. Just being with Jesus Christ, they received a lot. That's why after a while, after a while, when the Holy Spirit are fully, are fully descended upon them, after a while, they began to write on the meaning, the revelation of what they've seen, how God manifested in flesh, in whom they, the leaders of the world at that time, in whom the world crucified, because the world do not know him, nor even understand, nor even see the reality of his existence. But they, they were with him. 
they began now to write. They couldn't write while they were with him. They could not write the revelation whilst they were with him. They began to write these things after they, their heart was holy in him. Their heart was holy in him, meaning after the, Jesus has left, after he, he made an appearance to John, uh, uh, John and this, uh, John, uh, Peter and the disciples in, in John uh, 21. After that, they were, they, they, they were calm and they remembered. They began to remember. Now the instruction was go and wait in the room. Go and wait in the room. So they waited at chapter 1 says in their waiting it was like a day of Pentecost. In their waiting the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit descended upon them meaning they were anointed with the Spirit of Christ. So the same Spirit, the same Spirit which Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans 8 verse 11 when he says if, this, if the Spirit of the one that raised Jesus' mortal body dwells in you. Dwells in you. Do you know what that means? You are made now to lead the life of immortality. The life of mortality. Do you know what that means? Immortal life. Immortal life. A life that can never die. A life that the flesh has now evolved. Evolved into immortality. When your dependency is not about what is in your body. When your dependency of breathing it's not about your lungs. It's not about your kidneys. It's not about your heart. It's not about your internal organs, but by the word, just by the word. Because it was the word that was breathed upon men and men received from God. It was the bread. It was the bread. Remember, Jesus says, the bread of the Father hath made him. So we are being trained daily to understand the bread of God that has been breathed upon us. It's it, listen. Some says, but I'm waiting for this bread to come. No, brothers, no sisters. The bread has been bread, has been breaded upon you. It has been breaded the day you say, Father, I surrender to you, Jesus Christ. The day you surrender to Him, you receive. You receive. It is through obedience, through meditation, that you will see and understand what you receive. You can't say you've given your life to Jesus Christ. And you and you return back to your old way of life, your old way of doing things. It means what you say you surrender to, you you have no knowledge of it. The book of Hosea chapter six it says, the reason why people are perishing today is because they lack knowledge. It is because of people lack knowledge. If you have, if you if you lack knowledge, it becomes impossible for you to succeed. That's why people say, I'm God says this is what people says on the street. People you meet every day, they say to you this, I'm image of God. Even some write it on, on their body, God's image. Yes, yes, it's possible for you to look like God. But ask yourself this, do you have his presence? Do you have his breath? Do you have his presence? You can have his image. Yes. So God said, let us make man in our own image. So we all look like him, whether male or female, we all look like him. However, not everyone has his presence because his presence brings to, to us what we know and what is called liberty, what we know and what is called freedom. His presence brings that upon us. And through his presence, the working of the word, the working of the word will be seen around you. It will be seen within you. Meaning every word that you utter, every word that you speak, every word that proceeded from your mouth. It's a word with abundance. It's a word with abundance. When Jesus says, from the heart of the mouth, out of the heart of abundance, the mouth shall speak. It's because he was with the Father. In Matthew 12, when he mentioned, when he said that, it was because he was with the Father. So if your heart is not in with the Father, if, the, if your heart is not in one with the Father's heart, meaning there is no abundance when you speak, Meaning there is no abundance when you speak. And when you pray, when you fast, there is no abundance. When you even go into intense prayer, there is no abundance. Why? Because the heart is not in with the Father. You understand, as an intercessor, your heart must be in, the, in with the Father. Jesus says, love your neighbors, love your enemy. He says, pray for those that persecute you. Pray for those who hated you. Pray for those who gossip about you. And for those who even try to ruin you, there are many who you've seen and you've known and you've even have daily encounter with that even they, they try to ruin your name, they try to slander your name. 
they, they, they try to dent your reputation and they try so many times. And you know, the, the funny thing is that you, you happen to see them trying, trying, trying all of these things. And, 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 and the best thing you do to even, to even uh, uh, show them love or the more is to even help them in their times of need. How about you be the one, the only one that God made available for such a person? When there was trouble, when there was situation, God made you to be available. God made you to be available for that person. But this person never liked you. This person never even have any regard for you. This person has, ne has no respect for you. This person has no good will or good wishes or good prayer or good thoughts or good intention towards you. But God made it for you to be the one to help such a person. What do you think God is saying to that person? God is using you uh, to tell to that person, change your ways, meaning repent. Repent from your evil thoughts towards this person. Repent from your evil intention towards this person. Repent from your evil ways towards this person. Repent from your evil deeds towards this person. Repent from your evil gossip towards this person. So God uses us to speak to people around us. That is why we must always show love. When we come together, we must always pray for nations. We must always pray for the leaders. We must always pray for the little children. Pray for the men and women of God. Pray for families. Pray for those that are sick in their body. Pray for those who are without food. Pray for those who are facing lack. Pray for many today who have been entrenched from the place of work. Many have lost their work. Do you know what happens to them? Do you know what they are going through right now? Do you know what they are going through right now? I'll tell you this. Many who lost their job. Many who have lost their way. Many who have lost their livelihood now. There's only one thing that they'll be thinking about. Suicidal thoughts. How it, how how they will end it? How they will end it? Because many cannot do with the shame that has come with what they are facing. Many cannot uh, uh, stay in line with the, the the way and the manner by which that their name should be slandered by family peers, by family members, by family friends, by relatives, by cousins, by colleagues. Many cannot take it. Not everyone can take insult. Not everyone can take abuse. Not everyone can take shame. Many will be already thinking of suicidal thoughts, and you know what that means. The enemy right now will see their mind as a playground. The enemy will see their mind as a playground. But when saints from all corners of the world come together and, and begin to pray with the word of the Lord and pray for such people, remember, we are praying with the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord, as we have read in the course of uh, last week and also uh, uh, this week Sunday, we say in the book of Hebrews 4, from verse 12, it says the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. We are going to read it right now for everyone, for the benefit of those who are just joining us for the first time. We are going to read Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 12. I want you to open your Bible, whatever kind of Bible you have, if it's on your if it's on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, if you have the book, the book manual, open with us as we are going to be reading the book of Hebrews chapter 4 before we intercede, before we pray. I want us to read the book of Hebrews 4 from verse 12. Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Yes. For the word that God speaks is alive. For the word that God speaks is alive. And full of power. And full of power. Making it active. Making it active. Operative. Operative. Energizing. Energizing. And effective. And effective. It is sharper than anything else. Now, he's saying that this word, it is sharper. Remember the word, the word in the beginning, the word, it says in, in, in John 1, verse 13, it says, the word came and dwells amongst us. In, in uh, uh, Psalm 87, Psalm 89, it says, we are gods. So the word made us king. So now, Matthew 12, that we just quoted from, it says, from the heart of abundance, the mouth shall speak. So our mouth can only speak what the word is said to us. Our mouth can only alter what the word speaks about us. Our mouth can only speak what is of true, what is of right, what is of admirable, what is just, what is reliable, what is of peace, what is of love. Because this is what we carry and meditate daily in our mind. 
And such is the breastplate where we have been divinely kept by who? By the word. By the word. What I say? Whatever that is pure, whatever that is noble, whatever that is admirable, whatever of it, whatever that is a good report, think and meditate on such things. Think and meditate on such things. So now we are we have been meditating on such words. We have been meditating on such words. So just gonna quickly finish finish here quickly before we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. It's Hebrews 4 uh, from verse 12. It says, For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. For the word that God speaks. So within us, God speaks through us. Okay? We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it as we as we go on. We're going to get it as we go on. It says, It's full of, it's alive and full of power, making it active. So it is God that makes the world active, operative, energizing, and effective. So active, operating, energizing, and effective. We mention of we mention of people who have had some awful day, awful weeks, awful months. Many who have been retrenched. Many who have been fired. Many who have lost their homes. Many who now their minds are solely. Uh, thinking of uh, finish it, finish it, finish it. And you know, once their mind, you know, the world is also a seed. Once a mind catches such things, it begins now, it begins now to to uh, to to to, uh, to grow in the life of that person. In the life of that person. That's why when we are going to pray right now, we send the word, we send the word against that evil thought of suicide. Let that just let it, it must finish now. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. I've, I've exhausted all of you. I'm tired now. I cannot face this humiliation. I cannot face this humiliation. Forgetting that Jesus Christ faced humiliation for our sake. He was humiliated. Do you not know? There is no one in this world, no one, and I mean no one in this world, that, that can talk of the, the humiliation that Jesus at face for our, our sake. You know what it means to be to be a uh, uh, flogged, battered, beaten on the streets, and still give behind him they, they they gave him to carry the cross and they and and they put a crown of thorns on his head and they made him walk in the market square. They made him walk where people are always standing walking. Now it became a a, a thing of mockery. It became a thing of mockery. Now look at look at the one that called himself that claimed to be a king. That was how that was how low that was how low they they, they see him to the essence. Those who were with him, they became also they became uh, they, some of them. Their mind, they, they, their hearts could not bear it. Some 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 don't want to be uh, also be regarded as 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 a shame. As shame as, as as they were shaming our master Jesus Christ, many of them had to escape. Many of them had to run. Many of them had to run. But he faced it alone. He faced it alone. He never wanted anyone. He never wanted to invite anyone. He faced it alone. He carried it all for our sake. All for our sake. If you have that knowledge, you have no reason huh, to cry over anything that was said about you. You have no reason. To even worry yourself about anything that you have been called. Understand that you will be hated, you will be called names, but he already had been called and hated first. So you so consider yourself being on the right track. Consider yourself being what on the right track. Whenever, whenever you see this happening to you, just have that fulfillment in your heart that hey, thank you for that. Because what? God, you are in right standing with God, meaning you are in right standing. And right, right standing, being in right standing is being righteous, meaning you are in, in right standing, meaning you are you are being approved by God because God will not approve you without righteousness. <laughs> God will not approve you. You know what it means to have God's approval? To have his approval is to be next to God, to be next to God. So before you be approved, of course you'll be tested just as as our master Jesus Christ was tested, he was tested. 
from people saying he was never tested. Who told you that? He was tested. God led him to be tested. God himself led him, the Spirit of God led his son to be tested. But guess what? Understand this. Understand what was it that the son was holding on to? What was it? Was it banking on, 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 the, on the strength? Was it was it banking on the capacity of what was what he is or where he comes from? No, he's 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 held on, meaning what he was holding on, what he was banking on. Remember, the spirit of the father took him there and left him. The spirit of the father took him there and left him. What was he banking on? The world, the world, the world. That was why he says, Listen, when the enemy tries with everything that the enemy knew, everything that the enemy knew. And whatever the enemy has as, as a weapon of arsenal, and the enemy presented it. Oh, the, our, our master just Christ says, man, man, man must not leave my bread alone. Listen, when he said, turn this stone to, 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 uh, to bread, Jesus Christ said, man must not leave my bread alone, but by every word. Where does that word proceed from? From the mouth of God. Now we are reading Hebrews for it says for the word that God speaks. So if you understand this now, where does God speak? Through our mouth, our mouth, our mouth, our mouth, our mouth. So when we speak, it is God speaking through our mouth. When I put suppose it, when I stand and talk, it is no longer I who speak. Jesus said, The breath of the Father has made me. He has delivered me, set me apart. Now he has made me strong to strengthen the weak, to deliver the oppressed, and to deliver, meaning to bring, to preach, to, to bring to them the good message. To bring to them the good message. So the bread of the Father had to make him. So everything they were saying, it was through the Father. So when we have come, when we have come together as we are, as we are now, blessed be us, we, we are praying that the peace of God. As God intended, we reign on this earth. But we speak it. God brings it to action. God makes it to, to, uh, to, uh, to become operative. God makes it to become at, uh, activated. God causes cause his body to be energized. Body to be energized. Meaning those who are responsible to bring, to bring in laws, those who are responsible uh, as authority order, like leaders, like presidents, like uh, members of parliament, like you know, like those who make decisions, decisions that often affect the livelihood of people, decisions that often causes people to uh, to act, uh, to uh, to work out from God's presence. Such decision, we, what, what will happen when we pray is that such decision will cease from happening. It will cease from happening. There are so many bills that has been lined up. To be passed, it's been said since 2020, but it has never been passed. Another one has been said now that even many, many parents now are, are passing messages to say this bill must not be passed. And many parents are already in weariness. You can imagine being a parent and such law, uh, you, you, you cannot even think straight. Of course, your, your work, your business already will start to have friction. There'll be, there'll be, there'll be some effect from, from, from your work. Your, 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 your professional work now will be affected because why? Your mind is not stable. There is no stability in your mind. Why? Because you're thinking of the bill, the law, the, the bill that has been said, and now it's causing you to worry. But he says, worry not. Worry not. He says, do not be anxious of anything. First, it's not chapter 5, verse 18. He said, it's the will of God that we give thanks. Philippians 4, from verse 6, he said, do not worry about anything. Do not be anxious of anything. Do not be anxious of anything. But instead, instead, instead. So instead of your worry, you begin now to replace with thanksgiving. You begin now to replace with thanksgiving. Because if that law has been decided and you are giving thanks to God that the will of God will happen, what will happen is, is decided, but will it, will it be effective? What's, who's, what's going to make the law to become effective? It will never, it will never be effective. It will never be effective. It will never be effective because it is not. It is not uh, grounded on the word of God. So have no worries, parents. Have no fear. Uh, uh, those who are consigned citizen, we, God is in control. When when God is in control, just relax. He says, 
I will put your enemies under under your foot. So under your foot is where that law will be. So relax your mind. God loves you. God is with you. Blessed be us. As we are going to finish here, right? Can you uh, quickly finish? Uh, Hebrews 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Yes. So the word that God speaks is the line. Yes. And full of power. Yes. Making it active. Okay. Operating. Operating. Energizing. Energizing. And effective. And effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Penetrating to the dividing yeah. line. It will penetrate to the dividing line. Do you hear that now? It will reach. It will reach where human or human strength, human ability cannot reach, where everything fails. This word passes there. Okay. Mm. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. penetrating to the dividing line mm -hmm. of the breath of life. Of the breath of life. The soul mm -hmm. and the immortal spirit. And the immortal spirit. And of joints and marrow. And of joints and marrow. Huh? The deepest part of our of nature. the deepest part of our nature. Okay? Exposing. Exposing. And sifting. And sifting. And analyzing. And analyzing. And judging the very thoughts. And judging the very thoughts and purposes of art. See, so many art will be judged. Many many minds will be judged. Many thoughts will be judged. Many hearts will be judged. So, as we are saying, before we pray. Please don't come to his throne with worry. Don't come at the mercy throne. Don't enter his gate with worry. With worry. An intercessor do not come to the gate of, of the father with worry, with complaint, with murmur. Yes, there's a whole lot of lists that you have that you are waiting for God to answer you. And now you have been called to intercede. Now you come first. Father, I'm waiting for you to do this for me. Father, I'm waiting for this to be done. Father, I'm waiting for this to be done. Father, you promised me this. Yes, we are to speak on this promise, but how how we speak about it, you could you could end end up grieving the Holy Spirit of God because it says in the book of Psalms, in Psalms 100, Psalms 101, Psalms 103, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in, in our heart. So, say the word with searches. The word with searches. So, if, if, if you come and you are giving thanks to God and you leave, you lay aside whatever it is that troubles you, okay, whatever it is that causes you to worry, you lay it aside and you come to his gate with thanksgiving. Father, I thank you for what you have done today. I thank you for providing today. I thank you for your presence in my life today. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for many continue to receive the breath of life. Many have been strengthening from weaknesses. Many that were sick in their body have received life. Thank you for your holy glory. You are giving thanks to God. Now, the word that searches the heart knows the deep things of the heart, knows that you have issues, but you are not presenting to the Father. The Father who knows what, what, what you are going through, he will be there for you. <laughs> Be there for you. He will be there for you. So that's why Apostle Paul teaches us that, that do not uh, uh, worry, as Jesus Christ has said to us in Matthew 11. He says, Are you feeling weary? Are you worried? Are you feeling worried? He said, Come, come unto me. Give me that your worry. Give me that your complaint. Give me that your body. And I will give you rest. So we are in the rest. The rest that the world cannot give. We are in the rest with our master Jesus Christ. So such rest causes us to become intercessors and pray without ceasing. Praying that the will of the Father must manifest on this earth. We pray for, 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 for the peace of God to reign on our land. For the peace of God to reign in the families. For the peace of God to reign in institutions. For the peace of God to reign in our schools. So right now, blessed be us, whichever part of the world that you are, as you are watching on any social media platform, uh, we encourage you, encourage you to join us as we are about to pray right now. Uh, this is praying, praying for the whole world, uh, praying for men and women of God, uh, praying for the body of Christ, praying for all the youths from all over the world, uh, praying for the learners, uh, those who still go to schools, pray for them, 
We continue to declare spirit of excellency over their lives. I will continue to declare wisdom to be bestowed mightily upon them, knowledge and understanding to be bestowed upon them. As we continually pray for those that are sick in the body, uh, those that are lying in hospital, those that are facing challenges concerning their body, uh, those that are trying to uh, get up from their bed. You see, many many do not even know the, 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 the grace of getting up, sleeping and getting up. While some people, uh, they, they find it difficult to get up in the morning because why? The, 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 the legs could be uh, could be facing some, some challenges, could be the, the, the waist, could be the back, could be any part of the body. And they find it difficult to, to, to get up. But yeah, you, you got up, you got up because God loves you, because God provides for you, because God strengthens you. But do you see that? Do you acknowledge that? Do you understand that? Do you have that knowledge? Do you have that knowledge to say, Father, thank you for the bread that you have given to me, the bread of life? You may have ever wondered that you've never even fall sick. I mean, uh, uh, we are we are in autumn now. After autumn comes winter in this part of this uh, hemisphere. But all of all the time, all the weather that goes, all the changes changes of weather, you remain the same. Nothing happened to you. You are okay. You never got sick. You were never sick. You were never found uh, as 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 a, uh, someone who, who is facing uh, any kind of challenges. Why? Because the grace of the Lord is upon you. The grace of the Lord is upon you. That's why we're supposed to, we have every reason to give thanks to God. So let us give him thanks and let us pray to the Father. And let us pray for our nation to be healed, for the for those who are yet to receive the glory of the Father, for the word of God to locate all our sundry. Remember, we are praying with the word once again. The word goes through into every nation. It goes through into whatever is being sent to. If you are sending the word to nations, if you are sending the word to countries, if you are sending the word to families, if you are sending the word to schools, if you are sending the word of the Lord to institutions, the word of the Lord will go. So what is it and how? God is watching. God is the word. God is watching to see that he performs his word. So let us speak the word so that there will be what? Performance of the word. So join us as we pray right now. Father, we thank you, King of Glory. We worship you, our Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for this wonderful day that you have made for us. Unto us, you have given us this day. Unto us, you have given us this blessed day, O Lord, for we to remain in one continuous day of my glory. Thank you for your unfailing glory, Lord God Almighty. Your glory that remains, O Lord. Your glory that transforms anyone and anything. It remains unfailing. As we continue to pray for leaders, we continue to pray for presidents, we continue to pray for head of state. Father, we are... We we are bringing them before you, Lord God Almighty. We say, may the hand of the Lord over their life, may the hand of the Lord cover their life, may the hand of the Lord come upon their life right now. May the hand of the Lord uproot every nature, every nature of corruption, seed corruption that has been planted in their thoughts, seed corruption that has been planted in their hearts right now. We uproot with incorruptible word. We uproot with incorruptible word. We, in, or we uproot with incorruptible seed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for those that are in hospitals. We pray for those that are facing challenges on their body. Every health-related challenges that they are going through, every health, uh, every health, every health challenges that is causing their body to witnesses, that is bringing sickness and disease upon their life, upon their body right now. We declare healing over their body. We declare restoration upon them right now. It's the light of God that is active upon their body. It's the light of God that is active upon their life right now, setting them free, uprooting every nature of sickness by His truth. Uprooting every 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 root of diseases from their life right now. We speak life light right now. We speak life light right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. As we continue to pray for every orphanage center, orphanage homes, orphanage center, we pray that your glory takes over, Lord God Almighty. We pray that your glory takes over in every orphanage zone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. As we continue to pray for men and women of God alone, we pray for your mercy. We pray for your faithfulness. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. We pray, mighty God, that your glory reign, O oh Lord, in the body of Christ. We pray for oneness, mighty, mighty Father. We pray for oneness in the body of Christ. We pray for oneness, mighty God. As we continue to pray for all the men and women of God all over the world, whatever they are, mighty God, we pray for unity, 
We pray for unity in the body of Christ. We pray for love, mighty God. We pray for peace. We pray for unity. We pray for peace, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for revelation to be made known to them, O Lord. Revelation to, to come into their life. Revelation to come into their ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we continue to pray, Lord God Almighty. Families that are under the subjection of evil witchcraft manipulation. Every evil form, every evil which class that has been done in families, that has been done upon families, upon the family members, upon the children of that family, upon the marriage of that family, Lord God Almighty, every evil which class manipulation that has been done in the finances of that family, in the family business, in the family career, so that we pray, Lord God Almighty. May, may, may the word of Lord come upon that family. May the light of God set that family free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every weapon that has been done, every evil witchcraft for the nation, every evil demon of darkness that has been done in that family, we pray, Lord God Almighty, that your word set them free. Your word bring life upon their lives, upon their body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are praying for all the world, mighty God. We are praying for Africa. We are praying for Europe, Lord God Almighty. We pray for Asia. We pray for Middle East. We pray for North and South America, Lord God Almighty, as we continue to pray for you to that, we declare your glory upon us, Father. We pray, mighty God, that your word goes into all the dividing lines, in the islands, in the, all the islands, all the Samoa islands, the sub -sub -sub Sahara. We pray for your glory to reign above. We pray for your glory to follow us. We pray for your love to take over, mighty God. We pray for that we to reign the Lord. Every president, every leaders, every prime minister. Those that have been appointed to live, Father, we pray that your word, mighty God, your word take dominion reign in your heart. Your word take dominion reign in your heart, Lord. We pray, mighty God, that every corruption be ceased from existing in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory, our Father. We pray for our schools, O oh Lord. We pray for our learners, mighty God. We pray for all the workers, mighty God. All the teachers, all the medical professionals, every every workers that has that has been instituted, every institution that has been, that has been instituted, O oh Lord, to serve humanity in Christ. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that they will continue to do according to your will, according to your purpose, according to their faithfulness, O oh Lord. As we continue to pray, Lord God Almighty, your, your presence, your presence remain in all the schools, in all the colleges, in all the universities, O oh Lord, in all the teaching schools, O oh Lord. May your presence remain, O oh Lord. May your presence remain, O oh Lord. The fear of the Lord is the very fountain of knowledge, is the very fountain of wisdom, is the very fountain of understanding. We pray that your presence remain, O oh Lord. May your presence set free from, may your presence set schools free. May your presence set school free from every law, from every bill, bill that has been passed by mighty God, bill that are coming from the heart of the flesh, Things that have been said according to, according to the purpose of men, we pray, Lord God Almighty, the men's will will not take dominion. Men's will will not take over our schools. Men's intention will not take over our society. Men's intention will not take over this world, Lord. Your will be done as it is the level. Here on this earth, the earth is you, mighty God. The earth belongs to you, mighty God. The earth belongs to you. The earth is for you, mighty God. And the fullness there of the Lord. Flesh will never rule. Flesh will never dominate. Flesh will never tell the spirit, mighty God. We pray that your will reign, O Lord. We pray that your will takes over, Lord. We pray that your will takes charge, Lord. We pray that your will takes dominion, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Almighty God, bowing before your throne, we bless your name. Almighty God, bowing before your throne. Be glorified, oh, Maui, be for oh, we glorify, we glorify, oh, Hey. 
you bow before your throne, King of glory. We glorify your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, our Father. Blessed be your holy name, King of glory. May your name be exalted, the Lord. May your name be highly exalted upon our lips. May your name be exalted on this world, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to our Father. Glory to our King. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank the Lord God Almighty. Thank you so much, uh, everyone who uh, made time to be here with us, uh, praying for us, uh, praying with us. Uh, most importantly, you allow your your body to be served as a vessel unto honor. May the King of Glory blesses you all the more. Uh, we love you. God loves you. Remain blessed as we go straight to the world. Uh, remember, we are still in the month of April. And we are uh, the, the month was declared as the month of divine manifestation. Uh the, the month of uh manifestation of the divine. Uh and now uh, um let's quickly open to the book of uh <clears throat> okay. We just a quick recap if you're just joining us uh on 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 the first of this month we'll be treating uh what it means to to manifest. Uh, manifestation of the seven spirit from God, um, and the spirit of uh, uh, revelation fear, uh, the spirit of peace, uh, the spirit of godliness, um, and, and also uh, we also touch about um, on Sunday. It's also manifesting man manifesting manifesting the fruit of the spirit, the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, because the spirit. Comes from the uh, the spirit comes from the divine, so we are to manifest his fruits. We are to manifest his fruits, and it's only by his fruits that one can be known. Uh, and if a, a if a, a tree, uh, which is a person, remember, just says, "I am the tree, I'm the vine, and the father, and the father is the vine dresser." So we are also tree of life. So if a tree is not producing fruit, fruit from the vine, a such tree will be cut off. If it will be cut off from his from from his roots, if it will be cut off from his roots. So um and and on Monday we touched the uh, Isaiah, uh Isaiah uh, chapter eleven, and Isaiah chapter eleven, and, and and we and we hear how the spirit of God will, will bestow upon one, as one who is in obedience, one who has what obedience. If one if one obeys the teaching of the word of God. Your reward, your reward, because of your obedience, your reward is not it, it's not something that human can reward you with. If you if you can if you can place yourself as as a post support did, um, he said he was not interested in anything but the Christ resurrection. So what that means for him, he keeps on pressing on. He kept on pressing on. He kept on pressing on. If, 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 if he was living, he lived the life of Christ Jesus as when he was as an apostle Paul. Yes, he was an apostle Paul, but he lived the life of Christ Jesus. He lived the life of Christ because Jesus Christ's obedience he took him to death. His obedience took him to death because he had every opportunity, he has every chance, he has every chance, every grace, every grace to walk out from where. Before he was ever apprehended, if you if you go read uh, 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 John, John from John eighteen from John eighteen nineteen, uh, John eighteen nineteen, you know, if you go read them, you understand there that he had every opportunity because when they came to him to say, "We are looking for Jesus Christ of Nazareth," and he said, "I am the," they fell down. The soldiers, including Judas Iscariot, they all fell down. He could have walked. He chose, he, he chose to be obedient. So obedience is a matter of choice. When you choose to be obedient, God, the reward, the reward, only God rewards. No, don't, you see, human wants to, human being wants to be rewarded by human. I did this for you. What will you do for me? You've, you've actually, you've, you've interfered, you've interfered with your heavenly reward. Because, Whenever you have an opportunity to assist someone or to help someone, helping, help in whichever way you help. Remember before you help someone because you're a prayerful person. 
It may be the person needed an advice or needed some financial help or even needed something to get from you. Whatever you do for that person, you are doing to God. But before you, you, before you are going to do what you are about to do or what you have done or what you are thinking to do, remember that you are a prayerful person. And when we say prayerful person, be, be someone that is in meditation. Be in meditation. Anything you are about to do or anything that you, you've done, you, you, you did it for God's sake. Now, because of the sake of God that you did that help, God will reward you. Now, don't begin now to look for rewards from the person that you helped. Don't, don't interfere with your reward. Don't delay your reward. You delay your reward when you begin now to look for reward from the person you helped. You know, once upon a time, I helped this fellow. He's, he's now someone in society. I think he must, he must reward me. No. You, don't, listen, whether the person think of you, whether the person remember what you've done to, for him or her, don't concern yourself with that. God, the rewarder, he, re, he will reward your obedience. Obedience to them, he will reward you. He will reward you with obedience. He will reward you with obedience. So we touched on that uh, in the course of this week. Now let's go to... Um, okay, let's go to First John. With the first John, okay. Start from verse one, eh? First John one, eh? First John one. First John chapter one, verse one. Yeah. We are writing about the word of life mm. in Him who existed mm -hmm. from the beginning, mm -hmm. whom we have heard, whom we have heard, whom we have seen mm -hmm. with our own eyes. We have seen with our own eyes. See, firstly, whom we have heard. How did they heard of him? Moses wrote about Christ. Okay. Isaiah spoke of him. So they heard through them. Now, it so happened that even um, the last prophet on earth, which who, 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 who was uh, uh, John the Baptist, spoke of him. But John the Baptist, when they ask him, who is this person that you are speaking of? They want to see this person. John said, I do not know. Why couldn't John identify with the word? John has no light in him. He had no light. That's why he could not. There was no divine in him. But he was speaking about I, the one who is to come. The one who is to come now. I am not fit to lace his shoelace. That's how mighty he could describe him. Because everyone in Galilee, everyone in Jordan, everyone in Jewish land, in Jewish community, in Israel, everyone hears and fears John the Baptist. Even the king fears him. Even the king fears him. He was so rugged. And when he speaks, he speaks without fear. But he had no light in him. But now, when the light came upon him, when it was time for him to be for him to identify for him to identify whom he had no he, he had not seen. He had not seen. He had not seen. But the message came to his heart that speak of this person. Speak about this person. He had no idea that this person is actually a cousin brother to him. But when the day came. There was a light that was beaming far from where he was. Same light was on him. The light uh, uh, enables him to see, to see who was coming. So from far, he began to call his disciples. John was among his disciples. Andrew was among his disciples. He began to call them, say, come. Here is the Lamb of God. Who has come to take away the sins of the world? That's why when John wrote here, he says, "The one who we've heard and seen before he, he they be, they be, before they became his disciple, they heard of him firstly, and they saw him secondly. They heard of him and they saw him. So you hear you hear of something and you see uh, such things and you see the same thing. 
But how well did you work with what you've seen? How well did you work with what you heard? That is the question. How well did you work with what you see? Because John saw, but still John doubted. John saw, but still he, he doubted. So we say, but how did he doubt it? He had to send his disciple to go and inquire if he's if he was the one that he was expecting. How is it that the light came upon you? You spoke of the light. You witnessed the light. You heard the voice of God. No one else heard. You heard the voice of God. You heard the voice. After you said, this is the Lamb of God. Our God spoke to my son. In whom I'm well pleased. In whom I'm well pleased. That was the first 30 years of the life of our master, Jesus Christ. First 30 years, he still remained in obedience. Because he knew he was king. But he chose to serve. He chose to be regarded, to be seen as a, as a carpenter. He, he, he see himself to be seen, meaning he humbled himself to the lowest level, which is difficult in this, this current dispensation that we are living Arrogancy has taken over. Pride has taken over. Pride and arrogancy has taken over many, 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 many lives. Many people. Arrogancy and pride has taken over their, their, their lives. That they have no knowledge that they are bringing destruction to their ministry. They are bringing destruction to their home. They are even bringing destruction to their, to their, to their life, to their health. Because when someone challenges, so someone challenges such arrogancy, such pride, offense comes in. And offense, when it comes into the body, when it comes into the life, it comes with sickness. It comes with sickness, spine, the, the, the internal organ being affected, not because of what you eat, not because of any food poison. No, it's the poison of offense, which came by arrogancy, by pride, because you chose not to be corrected. And so Jesus showed us the way to the life. He remained humble. 30 years, he, he was regarded as a son of God. That's why when he went back in, on Monday, we, we touched uh, Mark, Mark chapter 6, when he went back to his hometown, where he grew up, he could not do, he could not do so, he could not do what he wanted to do. He went there with intention to do great work. But because of their ways of, the ways of their mind, because of the way their mind worked, because of the thoughts that they had, they began to belittle him. They began to gossip. How can he be the one that the whole world is talking about? Isn't that it's not his sister is here among us? How is it possible? It's not just a, a mere carpenter. That was how they saw him. To, to, to them, they saw him as a carpenter. And that nothing good can come from 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 Joseph Hope. He was not a school. He was not a schooler. He had no. Uh, he had no education. He was not a. a he was, he's not a a, 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 a. a Pharisee. He's not a Sadducee. He's not a professor. Mm. So there's nothing good that can come from such background. So the, the, the way the way their mind thinks, they began to speak in that manner. They began to speak in that manner. That Jesus. Ended up saying that a prophet is not honored in his hometown. That has been recorded till this day. Prophets are not honored in their hometown. It began with our master Jesus Christ. So John was saying, hmm, First John, listen to this. First John, okay. Um, Question one. Question chapter one, verse one. Oh. We are writing about the word of life. Uh -huh. In him, in him who existed in the beginning. Who existed from the beginning. Whom we have heard. Whom we have heard. Whom we have seen with our own whom eyes. Whom we have seen with our own eyes. Whom we have gazed upon ourselves. Whom we have gazed upon our, of, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And have touched with our own hands. And have touched with our own hands. Remember they walk with him. They ate with him, they move with him. He even sent them out. He even sent them out. Go. 
he sent them out and they came back rejoicing, saying, what great things that we did today. Even demon fears and bows to your holy name. Mm -hmm. Go on then. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. And the life and aspect of his being mm -hmm. was revealed, mm -hmm. made manifest, mm -hmm. demonstrated, okay. and we saw as eyewitnesses mm -hmm. and are testifying to mm -hmm. and declare to you mm -hmm. the life mm -hmm. The eternal life mm -hmm. in him who already existed in, the in him who already existed uh, existed with the father. Yeah, he was there before all things. The father says he was there before all things. And in him, the one who was there before all things, we were chosen. I mentioned in, in the course of the beginning that some people like to say we we are God's image. We are God's own image. We are God's image. But how can you be his image, but you fail to carry his presence? You fail to, what, to carry his presence. Eh? You fail to carry his presence. So now, Jesus, for 30 years, whose image was he carrying? Whose image was he carrying? He had the image of Mary and Joseph. He had the image of Mary and Joseph. But when the, the set appointed time, of the revelation of who he truly is, of truly who he truly was, of true who he is, is he was gonna be, whom Mary and Joseph already knew. When it was the set appointed time, what happened? The image of whom he carried now stopped from existing now. The true image now came, and it was what he came with the fullness, the presence of God, and that presence was the bread of life. The bread of life. The bread of life is a state of perfection. That's why anything he does is already registered in heaven. That's why when he sent them, when he sent them, because it was done already in heaven. So what he, he, he was seeing, what they were not seeing, is he, he saw the enemy falling like a light. They it was happening, but they were walking where they were. Where they were, they were walking, but the enemy was falling. And he could see. Because as it is in heaven, so it is on earth. So the divine, the divine was manifested on the flesh through obedience, through humility. Through obedience, through humility. So because when God spoke, the spirit, remember, the spirit of God came like a dove and rested on his shoulder. And the voice thunders. No one saw, but they heard the voice. He heard the voice. The voice turned up. said, this is my son, in whom I am well delight and please. 30 years of obedience, 30 years of humility. But God was pleased. You see the reward that God rewarded him with. The full breath of God. The full breath of God. The full breath of God. So someone said, ah, but he received the full breath of God. Adam did not receive the full breath. Of God. Adam never received the full breath. Hmm? Adam, Adam never obeyed. He never obeyed. He, yes, he received the breath, but it was not, it wasn't the full breath. It wasn't the full breath. If he had obeyed when the tempter came through the wife, if he had Stand on this ground to say no. This is this was what God said, and I'm not going to do it. Who knows what could have become of our of our existence? Who knows what could have become of today? He chose disobedience. So when you were told to love your neighbor, mm -hmm. it's a command that you are expected to obey, even though it's causing pains in your body. Even though it's, it's, it's causing piercing your body, bear it, for it is your cross to carry. Bear it. Some some don't like some don't like to bear to bear this cross. They rather want they rather want to uh, want, want, want want to uh um um they rather want to uh make other alternative. So well 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 you are trying to make alternative. As you are trying to make alternative, remember, 
you are now altering, altering the divine plan that is that was made to bring divine manifestation upon you. So you are now altering. And what causes plans to be altered? Pride, arrogancy, lack of humility, and obedience. Go on, yeah. First John chapter one verse two, and the light and the light and aspect of his being was revealed, mm -hmm. made manifest, demonstrated, mm -hmm. and we saw as eyewitnesses, mm -hmm. and are testifying to, mm -hmm. and declare to you the light, the eternal light, in Him who already existed with the Father. In Him who already existed existed in the Father. So, John 3 from the 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So now, God wants us to have everlasting life. That life is in the Son. That life is in the Son. So if you believe in the Son, and you abide in the soul. So now, not only must you believe, you must believe one. Now, you must be what? Obedience to his command. Hmm? Believe in his word. Be obedient to his command. Believe in his word. Be obedient to his command. That's how you begin now to allow yourself to become God's own vessel. When we talk on Monday about, we spoke on Sunday and Monday about Isaiah 66, how God intended to come and, and search, meaning seek for a place of residence, for a place of residence. And he said, it's not seeking, meaning it's not looking mm -hmm. for a place that is made with human hands. Rather, it's seek for a genuine and a Poor and, and a gentle and a broken spirit, you know, a heart that has been that has been a uh, 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 pierced, uh, uh, broken, a heart that has been uh, 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 that has been uh, that has, that has faced all kind of humiliation, but still remain humble at heart, remain humble at heart, remain humble at heart. Such is the heart that God Almighty seeks after. Such is that. Go on. This one chapter one was two. Uh -huh. And the light, an aspect of his being, was revealed, mm -hmm. made manifest, demonstrated, and we saw as eyewitnesses, and are testifying to, and declare to you the light, mm -hmm. the eternal light, in him who already existed with the Father. Mm -hmm. And who actually was made visible was revealed to us his followers. He was revealed to us his followers. Uh -huh. What we have seen okay, and see. ourselves heard, yeah, I said, right? we are also telling you. We are also telling you. So that you too may realize. So that you too may what? Realize. Uh -huh. And enjoy fellowship. And enjoy fellowship. So you must realize the truth here. And also, what? Enjoy the fellowship. Enjoy the fellowship. Enjoy the fellowship. Now, not just mere fellowship with thy two, but fellowship that bears his presence. It says, where two, three are gathered for his name's sake, right there in their midst, he shall be there. So he accompanies where his, his people are by those who are called by his name, those who are chosen of God, those who are chosen of God, those who are chosen of God. That's why it says, you cannot carry or boast about being an image of God. I'm a Christian. My father is a Christian. My mother is a Christian. I'm born into a Christian home. That is not identity. Identity, the true identity, is not about title. It's about who is in you. It's about who resides in you. It's about the spirit of whom do you have within you? Whom do you carry within you? Are you carrying the spirit of truth? Is the spirit of truth residing within you? 
and the spirit of truth reside within you, are you are you carrying the spirit of truth? Does his presence accompanies you in any way or any of your journey? Are you being are you are, are you with his presence? Is the divine being seen, being manifested? Does the world that you alter, does the world that you pray with, does the world that you counsel with, does, does the world that you speak with, does it bring life changing? Does it change the situation of those who you met with or those who you have an encounter with? Does the word that you speak, but does the word that you pronounce over the life of people, does it bring impartation? Does it reveal Christ in you? Because Colossians 1, it says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. So does the world, the presence that you carry, does it bring hope to an hopeless state? Does it bring hope to an hopeless generation? Does it speak hope? To those who, who have not seen, those who have not heard, those who have not had any divine encounter, does the word that you speak, does it convey hope to their heart? Does it say that you are on the right path? You are close. Because it says, my word is not far. My word, my presence is not far. It's not far. Deuteronomy chapter 6, Romans chapter 10, the word is not far. It's not far off. It's not far. So if it's not far, where is it? Is here. Is here. Is here. Is is here. We have to watch speak it. But it's existing. It was existing before way in time. But you have to watch speak it. Not speaking into existence, but speak into <laughs> reality. Speak into what reality. Go on there. First John chapter one verse three. Mm -hmm. What we have seen mm -hmm. and ourselves heard, mm -hmm. we are also telling you. We are also telling you. So that you too may realize mm -hmm. and enjoy fellowship with partners mm -hmm. and partakers with us. Uh -huh. And this fellowship that we have, mm -hmm. which is a distinguishing mark of Christian, is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And we are now writing these things to you so that our joy in seeing you included may be full. May be full. Mm -hmm. And your joy may be complete. That our joy will be full and the joy will be complete. So henceforth, we write these things. So we are speaking of these things. We are writing of these things, not because of anything, but because that our joy may be full. So now, when John the Baptist received this life, was his joy full? Was his joy complete? Hmm? The, the last prophet on earth, he came with the spirit of Elijah. Was his joy complete? Was his joy complete? Because he was in weary that he had to send. Aaron has had me captive. Now I'm facing death. But how can I face death when? When I thought I'm on, I'm on right path. So my joy, my joy is now, my joy is lacking now. There's no fullness in, or there's no fullness, fullness, there is no fullness of joy. So what he did, he had the opportunity to, he had the opportunity to receive visitors. And when, when his, his disciples came to visit him, you know what he said there? Go and inquire. Go and inquire. Jesus did not have to respond to the question that was asked him. What have your eyes seen? What have you seen with your eyes? What have you heard with your ears? Ah, what's that? We see the blind see. We see the lame walk. We see the leprosy being healed. We see. Not the told. We see. Now, take what you've seen and go and give him back the message. Where was his patience? Where was his long suffering? Where was his endurance? Where was that? Where was that? Put your finger there. Go to Colossians 1. Start from verse 15. Eh? Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Now he is the exact likeness of the unseen God, mm -hmm. the visible representation of the invisible. Mm -hmm. He is 
the firstborn of all creation. Mm -hmm. For it was in him that all things were created, mm. in heaven and on earth, things seen and things unseen, mm. whether thrones, dominions, rulers, mm. or authority, mm. all things were created and exist through him. Did you, did you see now? He was subdued oh. under rulers. Now, the, the, the thought of what the rulers could do the fear has cap captivated his, his thoughts. His mind is fearful. But he has seen the one who have dominion over rulers. He had an encounter with the one who has who has what? Who has dominion. Do you know what it means to have dominion over rulers? Do you know what it means as a child of God having dominion, having power, having a right over Evil demon, evil darkness, evil witchcraft. So anything that they are doing, they are in his case of impotency. You, you, you shouldn't be bothered. You shouldn't be bothered by what the enemy is doing to you. You see how how Jesus was unfair, he was unbothered. I, I love, I love our Master Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. He was unbothered how the enemy took him. The enemy took him, he just took him. He follows. The enemy tried. If you are, if you are the son, if you are the son, why throw yourself? Throw yourself. You see this kingdom? You see this kingdom? Tell me, does the enemy have any kingdom to give? Does the enemy have kingdom to give? We are we are living in a world today that people make choices, choices that that resemble things that are like an illusion but not reality someone will tell you I'll, 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 I'll give you this if you do this and, and you just believe you just believe you just walk along with such thing Jesus he looked at he looked at the enemy and he said do not what put the Lord your God to test you see Kingdom does not belong to the enemy. Kingdom belongs to God. And God has made his own people to become ruler on this kingdom. He says, the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. He didn't say it belongs to the enemy. It belongs to God. Now, I understand. Uh, uh, John 8 says, yes, the world has a father. Yes, he has a father. He must have, they must, of course, he, he, the world must have a father. The world must have a father because if you are not rooted in the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of if, uh, good and evil could be the root of the one who is not rooted in the tree of life. Because it's about choices. So Jesus said, do not put the Lord God, your, your God, do not. After the enemy has quoted Psalms 91, because God will not allow his own. Hmm? He will not allow his own to fall. First Corinthians 10 13 says, God is faithful. He will not allow you, he will not allow you to go beyond what your body cannot take. That's first Corinthians 10 13. In Psalm 91 says, He will give charge. Over your affairs, anything that concerns you that your is, you will give charge. You will give charge concerning your life. The enemy used that. That was to tell us, we that are Christ permanent, that whenever the enemy comes in any shape, in any form, it may come through your finances, it may come through your marriage, it may come through your ministry. It may come through your children. It may come through your colleagues. It may come through your business. It may come through your education. It may come through your the, the, your, your self uh, uh, employment that you are dealing with. It may even come to your health. Remember the word. Remember the word. Remember the word. Remember the word. The word was spoken 
Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11 is something that you must always meditate on. It's something that one must always meditate on. It's also, also manifesting the divine. It's also what manifesting the divine because that has been the plan of God from onset. That has been the plan of God from onset. Okay, we are reading Colossians 1. Eh? Now quickly read for us eh? Joshua chapter 1. We read it on, on I think on Sunday or Monday. Okay, start from verse 8. Listen. So God wants Joshua to prosper. God wants his life to prosper. God wants his health to prosper. God wants his body to prosper. The same thing God wants for you and I. God wants your life to prosper. God wants your health to prosper. God wants your marriage. Marriage is for him. He wants your marriage to prosper. Children are from God. God wants your children to prosper. God wants your home to prosper. God wants your family to prosper. God wants your, it's God that made you to, to be in the line of business. It's God that made you to, to work on the path, the career path that you are working with now, that you are excelling today. It is God that caused that career path to happen for you. So God wants you to succeed in, with that career. God wants you to excel in that institution that you find yourself. You are a doctor. God wants you to become the best doctor. Are you a lawyer? God wants you to become the best among the rest. God wants you the best for you. But but what, what is the key? What, what, how can one now uh, become prosperous? How can one now become prosperous if it's God's intention? And it is intention. It is his will. It brings development. Now, how can one, how can one key into this, into this knowledge? Hosea chapter 6 says, people perish because they lack this knowledge. This is the simple truth here. Read now. Let's hear this. Okay. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Did you hear that now? This book of the law. This book of the law. Remember there are two kind of laws. Okay. Roman, Romans 8 verse 1. It says, the law of Christ. The law of Christ, which is the one now, the book of life. This is the one that, that God gave to Joshua. The law of Christ. The law of Christ that sets free from the law of sins and death. It was the one that God Almighty gave to Joshua. And he said to him, do not let, do not let Christ depart from you. Christ is the word. Do not let Christ the word depart from you. Let's listen to this message, okay? Mm -hmm. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2 uh -huh. This book of the law shall not be part of the mouth, mm -hmm. but you shall meditate on it. But you shall meditate on it day and night, day and night that you may observe that you may observe and do according and do according to all that is written in it. To all that is written in it. So oh. what, where was it written now? Mm. Jesus become our open book. <laughs> that what? The things that are written in him, it was bestowed upon us. Can you repeat again? Mm -hmm. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. This book of the law uh -huh. shall not depart out of your mouth, uh -huh. but you shall meditate on things. Now, underline and key that word. Now, you shall now you shall meditate on the word. Now you shall meditate on the word. Now you shall what? Meditate on the word. You shall meditate. He meditated on the word. He said day and night. He meditated on the word. So he continually be in the word as the word was in him. And we understood Joshua health, Joshua life prospers. That his peers, in their age mates, they began to say to Joshua, "You look, you are like, are you, 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 you don't age. You are like thirty. You are like twenty-five. You don't age." Why? Wow, Joshua was in the world. Joshua was in the world. But now, we are saying now, Jesus is the book of life that has been opened unto us. Daniel asked for the book to be made open to him so that he can become so that he can also partook 
in the divine. Sees to sees to him that he sees something that he that he gave himself to through worship, through worship, meaning Daniel goes and, and thank the Lord and pray to God. Even when even when a, a plot was, was put in place, a scheme was put in place so that one should not pray to God but pray to the king. Daniel did not even fought for that. Daniel did not fought for that. He could have, because he was he was a close ally to the friend. He was a close ally to the to the king, a close ally to the king. But he still did not conform to that level. His prayer to God came with obedience that he received revelation. He received revelation. See, anyone who obey, who obey me, look at the blessing. Look at what God will reward him with. Look at what God will reward such one who obeys his word. Look at the reward that awaits such a person. Look at the reward that awaits such a person. So, and um, um, Daniel saw the magnitude, the essence, meaning the importance of the book that he pleaded with God there and there to say, hey, can I open this book? Can this book be open to me? And God said, no, close that book, Daniel. Close that book. Mm -mm. Close that book. Close that book. I want you to understand something here, blessed yes. Mm -hmm. Being called Christian and you are not manifesting Christ. Being Christian is, is blessed to be a Christian because Christian comes from Christ. So it's blessed. But it becomes incomplete if you cannot manifest the Christ. And if, if there is no obedience, if there is no humility in you, you cannot manifest the Christ. You cannot manifest the Christ. You cannot manifest the Christ. If there is no obedience, if there is no humility. Now, go back to Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For it was in him uh -huh. that all things were created. It was in him that all things were created. Mm -hmm. In heaven and on earth. In heaven <laughs> and on earth. Do you hear that now? In heaven and on earth. He spoke of it in Matthew 28, verse 18. Say, All powers in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Now I'm sending you with such authority. So the same authority he, he bestowed, he gave to his disciples. And they, and they followed through. So now he did not give them any money. He did not ask anybody to take care of them. He did not assign them to any 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 governor, any president, any uh, uh, shareholder or anyone. No, he sent them out in twos. And they came back with abundance of testimonies. Because the authority order was the one that was sending, sending them out. The authority order was the one that was sending them out. Can you, can you read there? For it was in him, it was in him that, all things were created, that all things were created in heaven and on earth. In heaven and on earth. Uh -huh. things seen, and things unseen. Things that are seen and things unseen. Okay? Everything came through him. Things that are seen and things that are unseen. Uh -huh. Whether throne, whether throne, dominions, dominions rulers, rulers, or authority, all authority, all things were created. All things were created. Remember, and John. Yes. Remember, John the Baptist said, "I don't know him. I haven't seen him, but he's coming. But he's coming. But did, does he know that even the rulers, whom he is scared of, was a was a creation created by the one whom he had an encounter with. If you are if you have encountered with the divine, then you should have if you, if you, if you should remain in his presence to overcome every adversities and every challenges. Because those adversities and those challenges they are something we are meant to step on to grow our Christian life. To grow the value of the word. To grow the value of the word in our life. 
to understand what its presence means. Because its strength cannot come upon you that you are strengthening already. His strength dwells on those who are weak. So the adversity that is meant to cause weakness to your life, cause weakness to your body, his strength is there. When you speak of his strength instead of that weakness, this is where many get it wrong. You cannot confess what you are going through and begin to say, I'm going through this. I I I'm going through that. No, this is becoming too much. I cannot take this. I'm going to. No, you are confessing your weakness. The one that is in you is not of weak. There is no weakness in him. So how can you be confessing that you are weak, that you are poor, that you are sick, that you are you are not making it? You've tried. You've exhausted all avenue. You are not making it. You are struggling to make it. So he, he said, in him, listen to that message, he said, in him, for in him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, things seen and things unseen. So those things that you, you don't see that is causing you to worry, is it was a creation created by him. So would you be patient enough? Would you be, would you be patient enough to see his godliness be manifested in you through your crisis. Instead of John the Baptist to be to be to be quiet and watch how things will unfold, he set us. He set his own plan to to motion. He set his own plan to to motion because he already whatever that the grace of God that came upon him. The light that shines on him, he has rejected that light by questioning if he's the one. He questioned, he, 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 meaning he made a choice because he has also borrowed a mind to his disciples to say, go and ask. Because one, one time you said to them, here is the Lamb of God. The next, the next moment you said to them, go and inquire. That is contra contradictory, contradictory. He contradicted, he contradicted his own message by saying, Go out and this here is the Lamb of God who have come to take away this. Here is the one whom you are supposed to follow, not me. In, in another moment, you said you should go out and inquire if he's the one. That is believing the grace. So, so so don't be quick to come to a conclusion that this this is the way. And this is how it is. That this is what this is the end. No, 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 no. In 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 that in that in that in that trauma, in that turmoil, in that situation, the grace is abundant there, and is about to manifest in himself. He's about to manifest himself. Do you not know that Joshua also went through all kind of things, all kind of trouble? Go read the book of Joshua. He went through all kinds of crises. He went through wars. He went through serious wars, serious crises. But each time, he was meditating on the word. So the divine was manifesting. The divine was manifesting. Quickly, quickly jump to, quickly jump to, uh, um, first Timothy. No? Uh, go to chapter, I want chapter 6, but let's start from chapter 3 first. Mm, I want chapter 6 also. Mm, let's, let's start from <clears throat> chapter 3. Mm, start from verse, uh, start from verse 15, it's fine. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Mm. If I am the same, uh -huh. You may know good people how to conduct themselves mm -hmm. in the household of God. In the, look, if I'm detained, you may understand and know on how to conduct yourself. Moral obligation. Know how what to 
to please yourself. Know what to say to yourself. Know what to say to people. Don't let your fear eh, rob people's mind. Don't let your fear of unseen cause people to doubt God. Do you know how many, how many, how many people turn, turn their back towards God? People who, who were once on the right path. There were many people that I know personally, they were on the right path. They were on the right path. But 2020 happened. As you all know, the whole world knows what, what transpired in 2020. 2020 happened and they turned their back against God. They turned their back at God. Why? Because someone whom they trusted, someone whom they believed said something concerning the issue. And it did not happen the way it was said. And now they began to come to a conclusion that there is there is no God existence of God. They've come to that conclusion that there is no God. Simply because they lacked knowledge. And let's say if what they heard, they didn't hear it. What could have been what what, what could have become their fate? I don't know. I don't know. But here's the thing. Everything that happens today, everything that you go through, if you begin to see that it's an opportunity for the greater that is in you to be made manifest, you've already excelled. You've already excelled what you are, that moment, that tight moment that you find yourself, you've already excelled it. You've already excelled it. If you see that if you see and you make such word that greater is he that is in you, you've already excelled and you are already you've already overcome it. Go on then. First Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. If I am detained, you may know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God. Hmm. Which is the church of the living God, okay. the pillar and stay, the prop and support of the truth. And great and important and weighty, we confess in the hidden truth, the mystic secret uh -huh. of God's mm -hmm. He, mm -hmm. God was made visible to human God was made visible. God was made visible in where? Eh? Where where was God made visible? Was it in the cloud? Hmm? Where was God made visible? In human flesh. The divine manifested in human flesh. John 1, from verse 13 to 14. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. In verse 16, the same John 1. It says, but to as many who have received him, They've been given the right and privilege. Right and privilege. So the, 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 the Baptist, did they receive the light when the light come? Did they receive? You say you, you, you are made of God. You are the image of God. But did you receive his presence? Did you receive his presence? Did you receive his presence? The question that he asked at 19, okay, disciples of Apollos met with Apostle Paul and he said to them, Ah, we okay, fellow man of God. Ah, man of God. Oh, man of God. No, them are men of God. He was man of God. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You believer, you believer. Okay, good, wonderful. But he could see that he could not see himself in them. He could see that he could not identify the presence of the master in them. He could see that there is no spirit of peace. He could see that there is no spirit of revelation. He could see that there is no spirit of liberty. And what did he do? Then he asked them, what did you receive when you believed? Okay, did you receive the Holy, the, the Holy Spirit when you when you when you receive him, and they said they never heard of such 
But they were Christians. They were Christians. But they never heard of such. He said they never heard of such, but they are Christians. How is it possible that they never heard of such, yet they were called? See, they see themselves as Christians, but they've never received the gift of Holy Spirit. But they've called themselves the Christians. At 19. Where are we at? First Timothy? Uh -huh. Yeah, read it, read. Let's just see. And great and important. Great and important. And weighty. And w wealthy. Weighty. Weighty. We confess. So we confess. Uh -huh. Is the hidden truth. Is the hidden truth. The most secret. So it was hidden because if the rulers, before, if they have come across this knowledge, if they have come across this knowledge, if they have come across it, it was hidden from them. It was hidden from them. You know, their heart, their heart was filled with wickedness. Their heart was filled with wickedness. So God hid this truth from them. It was hidden to those who are Christ remnant. So he says, many are called, but few are chosen. So those chosen, they get to be the ones that the truth is revealed to. But how can one say, how am I chosen of God? Listen, if if you lack obedience, if there is no humility in you, if there is no humility in you, then you, you can never receive any lifting from God. It's the lifting that will cause you huh, to be of God's chosen. First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five verse six. Can you read the first Peter? First Peter five. If you lack humility, if you lack humility, he says, "I'm seeking after one with a humble and a broken contrite heart, one who is humble at heart, one who is humble at heart." Don't, don't allow pride to cause you to lose your faith. Don't allow pride to cause you to lose your belief. Don't allow pride to cause you to doubt yourself. Pride has caused many to doubt their, their, their faith in Christ. Pride has caused a lot of, a lot of damage to, to so many people uh, uh, walk of journey in, in the Christian faith. Hmm? Read there, could you? First Peter 5 verse. Uh, therefore, mm -hmm. humble yourself. He said, humble yourself. He said, therefore, humble yourself. This was Peter. He learned from the master. He learned from the master. How the master humbled himself. In, even, in, even to the point of death. To the very point of death. That, you know, when, when, when something comes to your, to, when, when something serious, when something serious, something that you can, can lead to potential or fatal accident or something that could cause that could cause one to be put to shame. Whenever that is about to happen, you begin not to panic. You find people begin to panic. People want to do anything or, or anything that they can do to invade that moment. To invade that moment. When you want to do anything that they can to invade that moment so that they will not be added to the work of shame. I know really you do everything in that everything that you are doing, you are compromising your faith. You are now eating from the table of the enemy. Now you are now partaking in the in the knowledge in the uh, in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now now you are you are now associating yourself with people who believe to the grace of God with unbelievers. That's what and where you are going to be as you find yourself in such uh, strength. But for the one who 
even though they are busy scheming, blotting, and, and he sees, he found he or herself in this same sticky situation, and he began to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not run. He maketh me lie down in, in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He, he restored my soul. He, he said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, he, I fear no evil. For thou he is with me. They are rod and the staff. So you see that situation to toughen you. You see that situation to develop your mental, your spiritual, your, 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 your physical, your, your, your life as a person in Christ. You see that situation that it is to cause development to your life. It is to bring development to your body. It is not to bring you down. It is not to cause you to fail. It is not to bring embarrassment to your life. It is not to bring shame to your life, but to cause Christ, to cause the glory of God to reign because they will say this of you you see understand John 11 understand John 11 understand John 11 because the enemy already had, had invaded many many people's minds there many minds have already been invaded there and they look and say mm, now let's see let's watch Let's see, let's watch. Why were they so keen? Why were they so interested? Why? I'll tell you why. They wanted our master Jesus Christ to fail so that they will be the first to go and carry negative report. You know, there are some people in your life that you think they are close to you, but they are only waiting for you to fall so that they will be the first to advertise you out there. There are people whom you are eating with. There are people whom you are working with. There are people whom you are relating with. What they are waiting for is your shortcomings so that they will be the first to advertise you. But because you are in the Word and because you are meditating the Word, God will reveal vision who comes to you. And God will use what the enemy used as a shameful thing to elevate his glory, his glory to be manifest in you. So it is you that is manifesting God, but it's the glory of God that is reigning. The God manifest in flesh. His glory manifests in the flesh. The enemy invaded minds in John 11. The enemy invaded minds. So they were waiting. So let's see. Let's see. Now, Jesus, now, <laughs> being in the Father, he already knew their thoughts. <laughs> He already knew that thought. <laughs> and, and, and see how beautiful it was. Say, Father, thank you. Your glory will be manifested here now. Because crowd were invited. The whole community was standing there. Crowd were invited. The ones who are waiting for, for him to fall so that they can go and, 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 and spread the negative news. They invited and you know, in those days, people are people are a working talking. People are, are, are a working uh, media. In those days, so when the news of of an event takes place in a certain city, there are people who go and spread it even before before the official news come to other states. There are these people who are already taking the news to other states. So a lot of these people were there. So in that crowd, Jesus understood what what was going on because he was in the father as much as the father was in him so you know he understood what was happening and he said let their glory hmm? let their name be glorified father thank you so he gives thanks to god because now the presence of god was going to be manifested right here so there was no need for him to go and lay hand because he is the resurrection is the resurrection. As he told them in the beginning, when he said, that sickness is not unto death, but unto the glory of God, which it, which, which was prophetical. It was prophetically spoken. It was prophetically declared. He said, that sickness is not unto, it's not unto death, but unto the glory of God. So when it was a time for what he told them to be made manifested, to happen, he said, Father, thank you. And your glory will be manifested. So now, Lazarus, wherever you are, wherever you are doing there, it's time for you to come out. Come out. 
and guess what? Hmm. Lazarus. Lazarus woke up. He came out. He came out. Now, the enemy that invaded minds of those whalers, he failed there. So the enemy now came with another thing, enticement. Enticement, enticement of what? Money. Enticement of money. That's why I said we're going to go to yeah. Timothy 6. Enticement of money. If you, if, if you listen, money is necessity. But the love of money, the love of money is the root of evil. All evil, he says. He says, it's the root of all evil. Not just evil, all evil. So if you're not rooted in Christ, who is the tree of our life? Who is the book that was opened to us? If you're not rooted in him, and you are rooted for money, because it's, it's a seek him first, meaning love him first. You often hear people say, I, I love money, I love money, I love money. And you think they are a joke. It's not a joke. They are actually confessing their reality. They are actually confessing, not their weakness, their reality, because indeed, they love money. Some says money answered all things. No, money does not answer all things. Money has limitation. There are so many things that that limits money from functioning in, in life. But the Spirit of God is limitless. Nothing limits the Spirit of God. Nothing limits the grace of God. Nothing can hinder the grace of God. So so, so many fail to comprehend this message. Many fail to understand this. And, 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 and they, threw, they threw themselves to money by every means possible. And that's, again, causing delay in the true blessing of God. Because you've 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 actually deployed tactics, you've deployed manipulation, you've deployed manipulation, you've deployed tactics. So now, what whatever that you are doing, God is not in there. But you make it sound as if God is there. You make it you make it look as if God was there, but He is not there. And you know this for the truth, but because you are making communication. That said your purpose, you refuse to, you refuse to. Okay. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Master. Okay, go on there. Let's finish there quickly. Uh-huh. Therefore, humble yourself and pray to the Lord with all your heart. In your own estimation. In your own estimation. Under the mighty hand of God. Under the mighty hand of God. That you under the is listen that message under the mighty hand hand of God. So did he did the, the Baptist they lower himself or did he did he put himself as uh, go and ask first? Go and ask first. Or did he lower himself and say no? Let the will of God be done. So learn to lower yourself and be under the Father. That is presence you will manifest it in you. Humble yourself. Okay, finish that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, humble yourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. lower yourselves, lower yourselves in your own estimation. In your own estimation. Under the mighty hand of God. Uh, under the mighty hand of God. That in due time, that in may due time you, he may exalt you. Casting the whole of your cares. Casting the whole of your cares. All uh, your anxiety. All your anxiety. All your worries. All your worries. All your concerns. All your concerns. Once and for all. Once and for all. On him. On him. For he cares for you. For he cares for you affectionately. For he cares for you. He cares for you. He knows what you are going through. He understands the pain that you are going through. He understands it all. Nothing that God does not understand concerning your life. Nothing that God does not know concerning your life. But the, 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 the true question is, how well do you know that God knows? How well do you know that God is aware of your issue? How well do you have this understanding that God you are under his shadow. You are under this. And he is, he is there for you. And he, will make, and he will care for you. And he will shield you. And he will protect you. 
and you will not let your foot be dashed against any stone. How well do you understand such a message? Okay. Uh, let's go back to um go back to first Timothy. Yeah. First Timothy chapter three verse sixteen. And great and important and way to be confessed mm. is the hidden truth, the mystic secret of God. God was made visible in human flesh. He, God was made visible in human flesh. Justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. Justified and what? Vindicated in the Holy Spirit. Do you see now? See, God is seen in flesh like you. See, he says, you are God's on earth. So God is seen in you. Justif justified in you. Now, the Holy Spirit of the Father that is upon you vindicates you over all things. The Holy Spirit of the Father vindicates you over all things. So, vindication comes only by, only through by the, the, the Father. That's where vindication comes from. That's how one can be vindicated. That's how vindication comes from. So your knowledge of 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 uh, of uh, what you've been passed on to, uh, you know, when I say what you've been passed on to, I'm talking about family inheritance, family heredity. What knowledge, the knowledge from your family, especially uh, ancestry lineage, such things, that knowledge can never be decayed. That knowledge can never be decayed, or even whatever the purpose. That is being done, or what purpose that is being practiced, it can never bring vindication to your life, or to your body, or to your spirit. But the Holy Spirit of the Father will vindicate you. Okay, go on there. And great and important yeah. and weighty. And great and important and wealthy. Uh -huh. We confess in the hidden truth. We confess is the hidden truth. The mystic secret the, of God. The mystery secret of godliness. God was made visible in human flesh, uh -huh. justified and mm -hmm. vindicated in uh -huh. the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. was seen by angel, mm -hmm. preached among the nations, was seen by angel, preached among the nations, uh -huh. believed on in the world, he believed on in the world, uh -huh. and taken up in glory, and taken up in glory, uh -huh. and taken up in glory, they believed, and was taken up in glory. They believe and taking up in glory. Hmm? Believe and taking up in glory. So now, the Spirit of God wants to manifest. The divine wants to manifest on the flesh. So, would you, would you permit, would you allow, would you allow God's grace hmm, to happen for you? Would you allow the Holy Spirit of God to, to, to have his way within you because it, it will vindicate you. Hmm? His grace will be justified. And this can only happen with your obedience, with your humility. With your obedience, with your humility. An obedient person is, is the one who is not quicking Quick into offense, quick into anger. We are not quick to make to make pronouncement. Yes, you listen, you hear, but you allow yourself. You allow yourself to be led. You allow yourself to be led. It, it's, it's very important for you to allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. When you when you open your scriptures, when you open your mouth to, to speak, allow the Holy Spirit to do it. Because yeah, it will need you. I've, 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 I've heard someone asking, but how do you know when you have been there? Because the word will become, it will come upon you, it will come to your heart. The word will come to your heart. It's it and it's it's something that you never even thought of on your own. So it comes to you. 
it comes to you. So you are, when, when you do not hesitate, when you choose not to hesitate, when you choose to speak, you see, oftentimes you find so many people receive this grace. So many people receive this grace. I can tell you for the truth, so many people receive this grace, but many hesitate to speak. Why? They are a mere concerned about the environment that they find themselves. See, they are concerned about the environment. Say, hey, if I should say this, I will be called that. If I should say this, I will be known as this. I will be known as that. So the fear of where they are and where they find themselves causes them not to bring fulfillment of the divine manifestation upon their lives because they make conclusion to say, Hey, the environment that I am, I'll be called names, I'll be deemed this way, I'll be deemed that way. So I just shut my mouth. But you see yourself not having the rest, even within your spirit. You find yourself not having rest, even within your spirit. But you made a choice. And the Spirit of God does not force, it does not force Himself. It does not force. There is no force into the things of God. There is no force into the things of God, blessed be us. There is no forcing to the things of God. There is no what? There is no forcing to the things of God. God love you, blessed us. We'll call it a night here. We'll continue again tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is Thursday ministration. We'll be ministering the word. Uh, the teaching will continue again on, on, on Monday. Uh, to be here with us, the teaching will continue Sunday, Monday. I believe so. Uh, the Spirit of God leads and directs. We will we, come to the right service right now. Blessed be us. And so we are, uh, we thank each and every one of you that have been here with us. Blessed be us. We thank you. May the King of Glory bless you. We pray for you right now as the world that has been taught. May the spirit of the world be being revealed to your life. We pray that you will experience the manifestation of the divine. May you receive the unfailing glory. We pray that the word of love that has come upon your life, the word of love that has located your life, the word that has located your body right now, brings true revelation upon your life. May this message bring comprehension to your spirit, to your body, to your soul. May this word reveal himself to you in Jesus' mighty name. It is well with your life. It is well with your body. You are filled with the divine understanding. You are filled with the divine knowledge. You are being filled with the knowledge from above. I am knowledge. Knowledge that is not from ground. Knowledge that is from above. Knowledge that is to keep you, knowledge that is to sustain you, knowledge that, that is to bring the revelation of the true, true essence of the glory of God upon you, upon your life. I pray for your family be blessed. I pray for your health to be restored. I pray for you to continue to experience visions and dreams in your in your sleep, in your rest. May you continue to may you continue to uh, receive revelation in your, in your in your sleeps. May you continue to receive dreams and messages. May you continue to be taken into that trance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God loves you. God is with you. Uh, remain blessed. For those who have not known the Lord, for those who have not given their life to Christ, for those who want to uh, worship the King of glory uh, in truth and spirit, for those who want to surrender their life to Christ, uh, you want to give your life to Christ, uh, you, want, you want to serve him in truth and spirit. Uh, in other words, uh, you, want, you want to be saved. If you want to be saved, then for those who were once saved, but now they've lost their salvation. Lost, lo losing salvation is when one, uh, 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 when one uh, uh, found he or herself sinning, sinning, and sin is not when you commit an act of, uh, an act of uh, 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 stealing or fornication or adultery. Sin itself is when you disobey the command of our Master Jesus Christ. Sin is when you walk disobey the command of our master Jesus Christ. So when you see, when you disobey the command, the fruit of your of the disobedience is what people find themselves doing. The fruit of the disobedience is what people find themselves doing. When people now find themselves in immorality, in, in, in addiction, is because of what you disobey the command that was given to you. When you disobey God's command, you you you've caused sin to come into your life. And not just into your life, into every of every of our affairs. So anything that has to do with you seem as gain access to it. That was that was the reason why Adam fell short. And anything that has to do with Adam, sin gain access. Is his lineage, his lineage, the sin gain access to his lineage. So his, his children were affected. So so 
don't allow yourself to uh be to be someone who or who find himself disobeying the command of God. The command of God are simple; they are not too difficult. Love the love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your mind. Okay? Love Him with all your heart, wholeheartedly. When you speak of loving God wholeheartedly, meaning. You are not, in, it's your first and it's your last. You love him wholeheartedly. So if you love God, you will know that you will not want to do the things that you end up doing because you love God. And you know that this, if you do this, uh, if you if you, if you you go ahead and do it, it is not pleasant before God. So if you love God, you want to please him because Jesus loves his father. That's why Jesus pleased the father with his obedience. So if you love God, you want to please him at all times. So you want to give your life to Christ. Or you want to be reconciled back to King of Glory? Uh, follow us as we say this prayer of salvation. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your word. Your word is spirit, life-giving spirit. I welcome your word in my heart. Lord Jesus, I humble myself before you. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of your conviction, in need of your mercy, in need of your forgiveness. You laid down your life for me on the cross of Calvary. You rose again on the third day. So give me life of abundance. Wash me with your precious prevailing blood that I may be whiter than snow. Save my soul today. I believe in my heart. With my mouth, I confess that Lord Jesus Christ, you are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. You are my Reconciler. You have saved me. I am no longer a sinner. I am no longer one who does and practice, practices disobedience. I am born anew, born again. The old is gone and the new has come. I want to remain in the new. Grant me the grace to remain in the new. May my desire, my hunger, my thirst be for you. Thank you for the life of the divine that is going to manifest on me. Lord Jesus, I humbly request that my name may be written in the book of life where there is eternal life and no condemnation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My names are now written in the book of life where there is Eternal life and no condemnation. God loves you. God is with you. You are highly favored. You are divinely blessed. Uh, stay blessed, blessed viewers. We will see and meet tomorrow. Uh, same time as we will be ministering the word tomorrow. Uh, we we'll minister the word tomorrow to those who are facing any health relationship, uh, 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 um, any health issues, uh, also family deliverance. Uh, we we'll, we'll declare the word over all the matters tomorrow by the grace of God. We believe that uh, we've received so many testimony concerning uh, uh, Thursday administration. And we know that um, many were still going to testify. And we know that you will also be part of one, one of many, one of many that will be also testifying to the goodness of the Lord. And we believe that tonight, uh, the King of Glory will touch you from whatever, whatever city, whichever country, whatever part of the world that you are in. Uh, you are not far from us as we are not far from you. The word of God is with you. The, the grace of the Lord is with you. The presence of God remain with you. God loves you. God is with you. So it is to God be the glory from here uh, as we meet again tomorrow. We love you all. Stay blessed. Blessed viewers. Uh, we're saying uh, good night to all the Facebookers, all the YouTubers, all the TikTokers. Thank you so much. We love you all. Thank you for this wonderful time we've spent together. 